How's it going guys? Back at it again with another video. We have Mr. Ray Clemens. Hello. All the way from Tucson and he's going to show us how to do uh, basically an introduction to rammed earth basics. So at the end of the video we're going to have something similar to this here. And why we're doing this is when you want to get started with doing rammed earth projects um, you want to be able you want to test the soil that you have on your property or something that you might purchase locally as well. So we're going to basically go over how to make a very simple rammed earth mixture and a little bit of a form right there. And then you'll be able to see basically the end result of what you're going to be doing with the soil on your property. A lot of people say start small. Here we're going to start smaller. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen I posted a number of times about doing some rammed earth benches and a beautiful fire pit. So that's fully finished. But we want to give you guys some really good information to get started. So if you want to do some rammed earth projects on your own, this is the best place to start. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to try to check our soil. And one of the best ways to do that is with a jar test. So what we do is fill it halfway up with dirt, the rest of the way with water, and then we're going to shake it up. There's a few different ways to do this. And, um, you know, this is one of the just easiest ones. Just shake it up. Uh, and you can just let it sit. What we're looking for is for the sand and the gravel to stratify here and then all of the stuff that's mixed up in the water here is the clay and the silt. So the clay and the silt is going to settle on the top here. It's going to make a layer that's going to show us how much clay and silt's on top, how much gravel and sand is on bottom. That's going to give us an idea of how much clay is incorporated in this in the dirt here. The clay content is very important for the rammed earth soil mixture so we just want to know what that is. Do a jar test. We've done a couple samples here. The original dirt here we see it showing a 37 percent clay content and we want to shoot more for 25 percent so we added some sand we got it down to 25 percent and that's what we're going to use to make our sample block here. Okay after we shook this one up and we let it settle we drew a line at the sand strata and then a line at the clay strata, measure the entire distance and then do a percentage of how much clay is according to that full distance there. Mm. So if we're looking for 25% clay on this guy, say our line is up to two inches, then a quarter inch of that is going to be clay on top. Three quarters of an inch on the bottom is going to be sand and gravel. So that's how we get that 25% we're looking for. All right, let's get mixing. So we have our screen dirt here. We have some mortar sand here. You can use wash sand or whatever type of sand you might find uh, on your property. But we got this out of the store. Uh, we also have some Portland cement here. So the mixture we're going to use is a 7-2-1 mixture. So we're doing seven dirt, two sand, one cement. And those are all units, right? Seven dirt, two sand, one cement. So that gives us a 10 unit mix. So we have a percentage there of what of each type of dirt. So for this example, we don't need that much dirt. And for our cup size, or we're gonna use a one, one of these yellow cups as our unit size. So we're gonna half that. So we're doing three and a half cups of screen dirt, screen to quarter inch. We're gonna do one cup of sand and a half cup of Portland cement. So that'll give us our seven, two, one in the half version. So three and a half, one and a half. So all right, let's mix it together. What we want to do is mix it dry first before we add any water. So we got our sand, throw in our cement, and you can use a cup and use your hands, choose your weapon. The key is to just get it all mixed up into one color, chopping block. So we're just going to mix this until it's all one color so we get rid of all the tiger stripes. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to add water from here. Now that this is all mixed up. So a little at a time and just mix it with your hands or with the cup or whatever you like. We're going to mix this to 
kind of a rained on consistency, right? So if it rained pretty good and things aren't totally soaking wet anymore, it's just kind of wet and you can make a mud ball out of it, you know, that's kind of what we're looking for. So when you're mixing this, you really want to get in there, make sure you get down to the bottom corners. So there's going to be dry spots at the bottom. Just get in there and it's really giving you an idea of what it's going to be like when you put the stuff in the mixer. There's going to be dry spots that you have to get to. So something just think about as you're doing this, get it all the same wetness. It might be good to have gloves. My hands are a little bit more, a little stronger now since I've been working with this. If your fingertips are feeling tender, you might want to have some gloves on. It's up to you. This way I feel like I'm really getting to know the dirt though, because I have my fingers on it. I can feel how much sand is in it. I can feel how slick some of the spots are. So we're getting to a good position here where it's clumping up in my hand and it's staying together as a ball. So we know we're pretty close on the moisture content. I can feel it in my fingertips that this is just what we're looking for. Okay, so now we have our dirt mixed and ready. We're gonna set that aside for a second and set up our formwork. Okay, so let's talk about the formwork a little bit. <clears throat> so just thinking about what that formwork is in full scale, I've brought that down to a smaller scale. So I just have some one by six hardwood here that I found at the hardware store. Uh, comes in one foot lengths, you know, one foot by whatever, two foot, three foot. So I've got a couple pieces here. I cut two pieces for the end boards here. This is a one inch by two inch. They're maybe four inches tall. And then these guys are one inch by 12 inch and it's four or six inches tall here also. So we got two of these, two of these. We'll set these up together just like the rammed earth. So two sideboards, two end boards, and we're gonna clamp them together with some small clamps. So just like in the full scale, we're just doing this small scale. So we got boards, we got clamps. So just gonna clamp that on there. Get another clamp, clamp this one here. I've done this with just one clamp and the sideboards try to push out. So I got some bigger, more heavy duty ones. We're gonna do these also. Clamp these on the bottom here. Okay, get them nice and tight. And that's looking good. I also have another piece here, just the same size as the end boards. And this is gonna be our tamper you want to think about or one thing you want to have is a base. So when we have a base then we have our rammed earth wall sitting on top of something and I like to do this in a way that makes something beautiful that could last a while. So I make these as little bonsai rammed earth walls and this is just my way of making more little bonsai stuff. I have a few bonsai trees at home and I just like to play around with small scale bonsai stuff and it also gives me a way to like think about architectural ideas on a small scale that I can push forward into a larger scale someday. So I'm going to put the rammed earth wall on this base here and this is just a, a sample. It's a bamboo flooring sample. I got a whole pack of these and now they're just sitting in the closet so what, I would, what do I want to do with them? I want to get them some kind of use so I'll put them to work here. And it's that simple. Put it on top. Um, this guy right here, you can pick it up like this because we put some screws in the bottom. We're just going to skip that part for now and just if you want it to hold nice and tight put some screws in the bottom and you'll be able to pick it up like that now we can tamp away so we'll do a handful at a time so thinking thinking more about the full scale uh, maybe we'll do two handfuls at a time so we're doing one lift at a time right layer by layer by layer going all the way up so i'm gonna put some dirt in level it out and then just tamp it down so one nice and easy and then come back and do it a little tougher. And that's one done. Lift number two. As you're going up, you might want to check that these stay tight. I've had some of these blow out, so 
just something to think about. And also when you get on the bigger ones, you're gonna think about, you're gonna wanna double check that your pipe clamps are still tight and nothing's moving on you. There we go, we're at the top of this. And the great thing about doing these small scale walls like this is you can pull the forms off right away. When we do larger scale stuff, we wanna let them sit in the form for at least 24 hours. That can take up a bunch of your time if you're trying to get your color tests or your soil uh, cement ratios right. So this way we can pull this right off and we can see what happens. There it is, that's pretty. So this is a really nice, uh, the sand and the dirt sand cement ratio looks really good here. It's not too chunky on front. If you have too much gravel or too much clay, you might see some more chunky texture going on on the front here. This I'm happy with. I would go with this on a full size wall. Another great thing about these small samples is they're thin so they're gonna dry really quickly so maybe in an hour maybe in a half hour 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 and a half depending on how hot it is outside you can see this thing dry and the dry color is really what you're gonna end up with when you do your full scale wall so this is our dry color here much more light and gray than this really saturated brown that we have when we're wet getting the true color you have to wait till it's dry and that's where making samples can take up some time um, that you might not have. There we go, we built a sample and we've gotten familiar with our soil and our soil content and our soil mixture. What's really cool about doing rammed earth and I think it's probably one of the main reasons why you do it is because you're using local materials, you're using natural materials. So we use about 400 pounds of Portland cement for just the benches and for the, uh, for the fire pit. Now, if we were to do entirely ready mix concrete, I calculated it, we'd need over 5,000 pounds of concrete. So straight ready mix concrete, 5,000 pounds over 60 something bags. So we're able to save a lot of concrete and a lot of the, the process or the energy that went into making the concrete and just by using some of the earth that we have on our ground. Yeah, that's one of the real big benefits of rammed earth. We're reducing that Portland cement quantity in our building project by a lot, right? By 90% in this case. Well, we're working on that because Portland cement is one of the biggest contributors to global warming gases across the planet, uh, five to 7% by some calculations. So we in the natural building world really want to build without cement and everybody in the rammed earth world is trying to figure out how to do that but at this point we're building mass walls with as little cement as possible so we're still using just a little bit and as little as we can get away with of this portland cement so we can make our walls a little bit stronger a little more stabilized and a little more waterproof if we did this all just earth in certain circumstances if you're really really good with your soil content you can make it work but in most circumstances you need that stabilization that the cement offers you so we use a little bit just as much as we need to to get by awesome guys thanks so much for watching if you live in the tucson or in the phoenix area and you really want to have either maybe like a rammed or shower wall some benches fire pit you've done a lot of different types of projects yeah. what other cool things have you done yeah doing bathhouses, benches fire pits shower walls yard walls and we're moving into the bigger production into doing full-size houses so if you're looking for a full-size house we do rammed earth straw bale earth bag tires anything in the sustainable world give us a call ray's contact information will be also in the description box so if you want to check him out do that he's going to be helping us with our house so we're going to start construction on our rammed earth house uh, this coming winter and that's going to be pretty exciting you'll be seeing a lot more of ray and you'll be seeing a lot more of rammed earth Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon.
Peace. If you have a do-it-yourself attitude and an interest in natural building methods, then keep on watching. You may feel interested in a natural building method like rammed earth, but feel overwhelmed by the process. I get it. It's hard to find crystal clear instructions on how to actually do it. On top of that, starting with a rammed earth wall or even a house can be a big project. So I recommend when people first get started with rammed earth, that they get started with a really small project. That way you can build your confidence, learn the process, and then move on to bigger and more complex projects. My name is Ray Clemens. I'm a designer and architect for Natural Building Works, and I've been working with Rammed Earth for over five years. I've created a do-it-yourself video course called Rammed Earth Basics, where you have me as your instructor with over three hours of clear, precise instructions. I show you how to build a beautiful set of Rammed Earth benches and a fire pit that are gonna dazzle and amaze your friends for years to come. Whether you're completely brand new to construction or a seasoned do-it-yourselfer, I go through each step in great detail so you come out with a beautiful finished product. Rammed Earth is a natural building method that uses a combination of local earth, Portland cement, and sand. This building method has been used for thousands of years and has an amazing look and feel. What's really great about this method is it uses local soil, which really cuts down on the amount of cement that we use. This is important because cement is an energy intensive material and a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. By building with Rammed Earth, you're helping reduce your carbon footprint and creating a unique project that will match your landscape and last a lifetime. Take on this DIY project and build your family a beautiful place to build memories for years to come.